what is going on guys welcome back to Mets central and today we are going to be talking about a couple signings that the new york mets have made two in particular while we're waiting for the big news of yoshinobu yamamoto potentially for the mets especially while the mets crosstown rival goes out and get juan soto you're hoping that the mets make a big move they did make a couple of smaller moves we're not going to talk about the minor league signings just because they really aren't anything too significant. And I, I know I'm late with one of these signings, but I wanted to wait for another player to sign as well to go with us just because of the fact that realistically, am I going to be able to talk about Michael talking for like five minutes? Probably not. So yeah, he signed as well as Jorge Lopez, who reportedly signed tonight to the New York Mets. The Lopez deal, we're not too 100% sure on in terms of like the details and everything. Tonkin... I think the details were that it's a $1 million contract, but it's a split contract. So if he goes down to triple A, he will be making less. So at least the Mets will not be paying a lot when they need to send him down. Hopefully they don't need to. I shouldn't say when, but if they need to send him down, then they're in a fine spot financially. But we're going to talk about all this before we do leave a like on the video. If you do enjoy subscribe, if you guys are new, especially if you're Mets fans and turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live next on the channel. But let's talk about these signings. First, I'm going to uh, talk about the signing that I do like out of the two. Michael Tonkin is the signing that I do like because the Mets have needed a swingman for a bit now. They have tried numerous guys. They tried Peterson at points. They've tried even Tyler McGill for points, and it just hasn't worked. They have not had a successful swingman since Trevor Williams has left the team. And quite frankly, I don't expect Tonkin to be anything like Trevor Williams because Trevor Williams was just one of a kind in terms of how special he was and how good he was for the Mets in that role but I do expect to get some good work from Michael Tonkin who had a very respectable year he had 80 innings pitch what have I been preaching all offseason that I want guys that could eat innings and even if it's a starter if it's a relief pitcher I don't care eating innings is what this pitching staff desperately needs and his stuff will not blow you away it really will not. You look at the Savant page, it's mostly mid. And he pitched last year. The last time before that was 2017. So you have to go all the way back and still pretty much mid when you look at his Savant page. He had a couple things in the red, like fastball, velo. But this is a guy that played, I think, even for the Long Island Ducks, actually, which is what's funny. But he had a very respectable 2023 last year. Doesn't blow you away with the strikeout stuff in particular. Has an 8.44 Ks per nine. His walks, okay, 2.59. Not the worst. Y you could work with it. Home runs per nine, not the greatest either, 1.46. Uh, but you're not getting him to come in here and be the eighth inning guy or to be just a big, big part of the bullpen. He's here to come in if heaven forbid a starter gets hurt or you need a spot starter or an opener or the team's getting blown out and you need a garbage man that's what he will come in for and you get a very respectable arm where you know maybe the Mets are down like four to nothing five to nothing in the first inning you go ahead and bring him in he keeps you in the ball game at the very least of that and then the Mets maybe come back and win I'm not expecting him to be a big war guy either he's a point he was a point one war guy for the Atlanta Braves last year he had an ERA at 4.28 a expected ERA 3.85 and a FIP at 4.43 so again not the sexiest numbers when you look at it on paper but it's still not the worst and you know I'm very critical of the Mets moves uh, I, I have been Granted, because it's hard to be positive when you look around the league, especially across the town, and you see them go out and get one. So it's hard to not lose your patience a bit. But I'm definitely happy with the signing. The signing I'm not as thrilled about was the Jorge Lopez signing because this is a guy that's probably going to be in a bit of higher leverage spots. I don't know if this is supposed to be their Ottavino replacement or if this is supposed to be a replacement for just like drew smith to pitch in like the seventh inning or sixth inning whatever like middle leverage situations but this is not really my favorite signing you go to his savant page yuck i mean his fastball velo good it's in the 90th percentile and you look at his tw uh 2022 campaign and it's pretty much like all in the red outside of his chase uh whiff and his k rate really and then his walk rate too you know three pretty important things <laughs> but then you look at the rest of his career, all in the blue, and you want to vomit. 
This is a guy that was pretty much a one-season wonder, which is why I'm pretty pissed off about this signing in particular. Can they cut him? Yes, because I think it was like a $2 million deal I saw, but we don't even know officially yet. But you look at his numbers, I'm a little puzzled as to what they see in Jorge Lopez here. 2022, again, not bad at all. 9.13 case per nine. The walks per nine, though, you want to vomit. 3.93? He at least wasn't giving up the long ball at 0.51. Okay. And then you look at his baseline, his ERA, 2.54, 3.31 expected ERA, 3.42 FIP. Okay. I It is what it is. You don't expect relievers to have the greatest ERAs or anything. But then you go to last year. It speaks volumes, though, when your ERA is 5.95 and your expected ERA is still at 5.41. FIP at 5.76, and his case per nine dropped from 2022 to 7.47. That's the third worst, I think, in his career, just looking at the page uh, at Fangraphs here. Walks per nine was still very high. It, went, it at least improved a bit, 3.36, but barely. And then his long ball, he was way more prone to the long ball this past year, 1.83. Not great stuff. Uh, not great stuff at all from Jorge Lopez and I'm really not sure what role they see him in but regardless why go out and get Jorge Lopez when there's plenty of other relievers on the market that you could take a flyer on that have proven way more in this league and will probably cost a similar price if not maybe a little more but at least you're getting a guy if there's one guy maybe you could trust it's David Stearns to put a pitching staff together sure but Jorge Lopez is like, come on, we could do better here, I feel like. But regardless, I, I'm not going to overreact entirely, even though I'm pretty pissed off with the way this offseason has gone so far, just because of the lack of transparency with this organization. But uh, yeah, I'm a little annoyed too, because of the offense really does not have much going for it either. And I don't know what they're going to do about the offense. We're hearing rumblings about... Or hey, Soler, I think that would be a great ad for this team. This team has needed a DH for a very long time now. That wouldn't be bad if they go out and get, we're hearing Michael A. Taylor potentially for the lineup. I'm not sold on that. If he's a fourth outfielder, fine. And then there's Young Hu Lee, I think uh, was his name as well. That's around the rumor mill. And I feel like I'm forgetting another guy, Teoscar Hernandez. That was it. That's a guy I'd be on board with, but I'm not entirely sure what direction the Mets are going to go in when it comes to the offensive side things. But pitching wise, at least they're adding some depth this year. That's the only thing that I can look at this as a positive for is that they're adding better depth because I wanted to scream watching Phil Bickford pitch games for this team last year. It just, it, it can't happen. But they need to add still way more bullpen help. They still need to add rotation help. I think that's abundantly clear. But we'll see what happens. I Like, Yamamoto is a must. Yamamoto is a must for this team. And I know it might be tough because of the fact that the Yankees are probably a more intriguing option with them getting Soto and having the guys that they do now in place. That might be a more intriguing option for him. But... Well, you just got to hope that there's some chance that he's like, you know what, I'll just take the best offer possible because I have no doubt the Mets will give the best offer. It's really going to come down to, does Yamamoto want to, is he in a rush to win right now? Or could he maybe settle for what the Mets might have in store for the future? I don't know. I don't know what Yamamoto's mindset's at. I don't know at all. I'm not Yamamoto. If I was, I'd obviously sign with the Mets. So yeah, um, that's going to be it, though, really, for me. I don't have much else to add with this. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below, though, for what you guys think about these two moves. Are you for it? Are you against it? Are you in the middle like I am, where it's like a wait-and-see game? Let me know all that in the comment section down below. But thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like on your way out. Subscribe if you guys are new, especially if you're Met fans. Turn on your notifications so you know when I upload or go live next on the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Let's go, Mets.